Hello, my name is Steve Lord, and today I'm going to go over my uh, sculpting process in ZBrush here, and hopefully you guys be able to take something from it. So let's just get going here. I start out with the Z-Sphere. I don't do this every time for sculptures, because if I'm doing something for work, I'll have maybe something already built out, but... Uh, a lot of times I will start from a Z-Sphere. So, and I'll just start creating a character with it. <clears throat> and I don't usually sculpt in a T-Pose. I go right into my pose that I want. So you can see I'm blocking it out here, this pose. So it's basically the general idea I was shooting for. Then I will make it into a, a mesh to work on. And I will do Control W, turn it into one, one poly group. And then I'll start uh, <clears throat> just diving in here. Change my modifiers, I'll change my roll distance, turn my lazy mouse off. Okay. And I like using clay tubes a lot at a low setting can really build up a lot of nice clean forms. Right now I'm not worrying about being pretty, I just want to build out the, the basic silhouette of this piece. And then you, I like to start with a rib cage, figure out the position into that. Then I like to think about the, the pelvis, how that's going to lay out. Then the arm positions. And for quite a large portion of my sculpting process, my piece looks uh, quite quite rough, pretty ugly. It's just not till the very end where everything starts to come together for me. Some people, um, their pieces look really good early on, and I, I envy them. I, I wish I could do that, but my pieces are very, very sloppy. Because I'm, I'm doing a lot of calculating in my head at this point. I'm looking at the overall silhouette. Thinking about how the ribcage lays out. Then at some point around this time, I'll take my standard brush. Um, you can use any of these alphas. Just pick alpha 47 for now. change my, turn off my lazy mouse, bring up my roll distance again. And now I like to scribe in my center lines, get things mapped out. And this, this really helps keep you on track. I would always go back to taking these measurements and go back to forward. Make sure your spine is meshing with your, um, your sternum here and it's the same angle. A lot of times people sculpt and they won't think of that and the spine and the scapula be, or um, the sternum will be all 
askew from each other. Same thing with your pelvis. Make sure that everything's lined up properly. Then I'll go to my next step. As you can see here, I start building it out more. Let's go to this one. So, making a little more progress. You can see I have my center lines starting to get things blocked out. And you can see I'm focusing on the torso mostly. Not worry too much about the legs right now because this this area is the main area where things are going to look right or wrong. Torso is really important to nail first, I think. I mean, you can do the whole piece, obviously, but this is how I did this one. And then start blocking in a little more, building out the legs, still minding my, my center line. You can see here it's starting to skew a little bit. You got to be careful. You can always take your lasso and see where you're at. Make sure everything's lined up. Yeah, and I cut this in pieces so I can take the arms off as well. So I can see this portion. Then I go to the next step, more refining of the forms. And I can start thinking about how I'm going to block in The musculature now that I have my my basic rib cage and hips kind of figured out still have my center line here still not focusing too much on the legs on at this one I knew the main focus of this guy was going to be the torso and the arms, so that's why I uh, spent a lot more time on these areas. Then I'm just using my clay tubes again. You can just you can get a lot done with clay tubes going back and forth, go negative. Then I can use my standard again, and then I'll go with standard alpha. And you can always do custom stuff that suits you, obviously, but I do a lot of off-the-shelf brushes. Then my next step is starting to refine the actual muscle groups here. I'm blocking in. It's almost like an anatomy lesson at this point. I'm... Um, Let's do my uh, damn standard. That's another good one to use. Bring my roll distance up. Now I can start scribing in the actual muscle groups, how they're how they're going to lay out. Then I'll go back in. Start refining a little bit till I till I like what I see. There's a lot of back and forth at this stage. 
I'll probably re-sculpt this probably around 10 different times, like going back and forth, back and forth, till I, I like the result. It's not very efficient, but that's, that's just how I do it. Because, uh, like I said, I'm always calculating, I'm always trying to measure and feel out. Like in my head, I'm visualizing basically, uh, like I said, an anatomy lesson in my head. It's like, okay, the tricep, this tricep goes here. This one from this view will be showing a little, will pop out. The back side here will show this and then you'll have a flat area here where your tendons pressing on the on the muscle and the fascia And let's see, it's a little more refining. I'm starting to do some uh, some hand work here. Blocking this in. Going back to my center line here, you can see this. Now I smooth out my forms, see how they look. Going back in again. Now that I have my forms kind of flushed out to how I really like them. More modification. Now at this point, I'll start putting in bringing it kind of come to life here bring in some um, veins and I use I do veins with uh, inflate bring this down bring this up That's just pretty much how I do it. Then, you know, you want to put some texture on. Pretty simple. You can use a lot of off-the-shelf stuff here, or you can make your own. Then a little more refining of the muscle groups. And then you have this result. It is about as far as I got with it. So I hope that helps you guys kind of give an overview of uh, how I do things. And uh, take care.